Blau und Weiß sein Leben lang. Hallo meine Leute. Willkommen zum einzigen Schalke Podcast auf Englisch. That's right, folks. Officially the world's only English Schalke Podcast. Welcome to episode 131 of Schalke America. I'm your host, Richard Carmen. Joining me as always on a victory Monday, Jack Mangan. Jack, how are we doing tonight? Raise a glass for victory Monday, my friend. Nice to say those words. Oh, a long time coming. Especially oh, having, after having watched a game, which was also fantastic. Uh, but, yeah. uh, dude, Delton's arena, despite not being anywhere near capacity from where I could tell, oh. rocking the atmosphere coming across. They helped the team so much. They helped the team so much. On the television broadcast. Um, great to see fans back in the stadium, specifically the Delton's arena, because it's a great venue. We have great supporters over there. I mean, it, yeah. the atmosphere there is, is certainly one of the best. And, um, yeah, that just made me happy seeing that too. And obviously, yeah, I mean, you heard it on all the goals and in other big moments in the match. Um, yeah, I can agree. It definitely helped them. I mean, you could tell when they were throwing into tackles and stuff and the crowd were, you know, uh, you know, rewarding them for that with, with some applause and stuff as well. It was fantastic. Or when it got low moments, the crowd started cheering and cheering, chant them up and get, you know, get them fired up. Uh, it was, uh, it was great to see. Uh, and we, you know, and newsflash, like we, you mentioned, we both got to watch the game live. Uh, uh, which is great, you know, for us. Uh, you know, if you guys listening to our last podcast, you heard the tips that we gave and how to watch the game live. And so, uh, I had a little bit of issues in the beginning, but I got to watch the whole game. Uh, I got to watch a little bit in the beginning again. So, uh, yeah, uh, great game to tune into. Uh, crazy, crazy game, um, but a good way. It's almost a complete opposite of what we saw the week before against Regensburg, right? Four-one uh, loss in that game, and everyone had their heads down. It's the end of the world. We're not going to get promoted. This game happens, and it's a completely opposite, almost, right? Um, but yeah, let's. Uh, should we just get right into the game? Uh, obviously, we got deadline stuff to talk about. We can talk about that first, I guess. Yeah, no, sure. But like, re- really important result, though. I mean, because you, you you heard that after that Regensburg uh, result, already the conversations online and stuff starting yeah. to get negative. People talking about, you know, trainer replacement, that sort of thing, um, and and people kind of losing faith and getting skittish about uh, Gramatzis already. And uh, yeah. I mean, that, that's a that's a big result for them to to respond to a bad result that way, especially because. Last couple of seasons, there's like an era of inevitability to it. Like once this train starts and we start seeing these bad results, you know, we show up the next week hoping we're going to see something different. It just kind of compounds and compounds. So to nip that in the bud immediately and come back with a, with a stronger performance, I think was, was great. Yeah, yeah. Let's get into this game. Uh, looking into the starting lineups of this one. Uh, obviously for the home team, Pretty much standard lineup that we had, well, sort of, I should say. Fairman and goal. Um, and then back three of Tiao Itakura gets to start in this one. Kaminsky, uh, midfield five of Cherlinov on the right. Uh, Paulson uh, in the holding midfielder role. Oyan, excuse me, on the left. Uh, Drexler and, and Rodrigo Salazar in the middle. Uh, and then up top, obviously, the two horses, Bulter and Taroda. Um, I mean, what, what more can you say about the two guys up top? They can score goals, and they did in this game. Uh, Jack, it's just uh, these guys are pulling the rest of the team away. Not that the team is doing bad, right? Because I think uh, overall in this game, the team played fairly well. Yeah, you certainly got to like that partnership up top. I got to tell you, if Bolter was on, I can tell that if he was on like an opponent team, I would hate him. Oh, Bolter's yeah. the kind of player I would absolutely despise playing against. But because he's on our team, I enjoy him. But, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah he, he just feels like he's like, he, he looks as though he's like personally affronted by everything that's happening on the pitch at all times that isn't him scoring a goal. Yeah. Uh, so he just, he plays with like, with like an anger or an edge to it. That's like, like I said, with what he always looks angry. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting to watch. And I kind of, I kind of like that fight. And I think we've missed some of that in the past. So um, yeah, but definitely like that, that um, blossoming partnership between him and Toronto. And I think, uh, obviously, again, the two wing, the, I call them wing backs because that's what they're kind of playing in this formation. But Oyan and, and Terlinov, uh played, you know, pivotal roles. They, they, are constantly down the flank. Uh, Oyan had a, a a nice play where it led to a, a goal. Cherlinov was involved as well. Um, they seem to be turning up even more so than the mid the mid other three in the middle. Paul I mean, obviously still playing excellent. Drexler was involved and Salazar as well. But I think the two wing guys really for me are the guys uh, on top of the two strikers who have been performing like pretty amazing so far. Well, so so much of our build up has gone through them. Almost too much, you could argue, and I think that's one of my yeah. one of my like only i mean main criticisms from this is i feel like 
Um, our, our central midfield three are a little too static in possession and build up at times, and there's not enough activity there. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, Obajan in, in particular, um, you know, once again, I haven't watched, I hadn't watched a ton of minutes this season previously, and now having the opportunity to sit down and watch a game, um, he's real impressive. Yeah. One of the, I mean, that's the kind of like wing back play in terms of going forward and contributing to the attack that we kept needing and we're hoping that like Ochipka could deliver consistently and then you know when Cole Simich came in last season maybe he can provide that and uh yeah I mean so first of all decent set piece delivery for the most part which is another thing we've been lacking basically since Calajuri left yep um we've really missed consistent you know quality delivery which I think he's provided um from both corners and and you know free kicks whatever uh but then also just a number of really nice through balls like the guy strikes a lovely ball and he's, he's providing some good service at times um, and so I was, yeah, I was really impressed with his play and he's, uh, he could end up being a, I mean, just one game that I'm talking about from having seen, but, uh, he, he definitely seemed slightly like a cut above in, in terms of some of the things he was doing out there. Yeah. It's certainly a position we've been lacking, in, uh, in the past year or two, really. Uh, and we also got to see the debut in terms of starting, uh, from Itakura. I think it was, um, an improved performance, obviously the first goal, which we'll get into here in a second. Uh, some question marks there, but overall, I think he, he if, if I'm not mistaken, he won majority of the head balls that he went after. Uh, he was all over the place defensively, and I, I thought he, he did a, it was a much better performance from him, and something that uh, you know, it, it's I'm glad it happened because we got to see Flick in a position he's normally played the defensive midfielder role, um, and so that that was I was happy because I saw that. What were your thoughts on Itakura and his uh, his first start? So I mean, he got thrown in kind of unfairly I think last week and, and yeah. a lot of the goals that Regensburg scored were kind of like broken goals with deflections and kind of weird things going on I did feel like Iakur was kind of out of position on a couple of those mm-hmm. um and you know not that there weren't a lot of things going wrong on those plays but was partially to blame um depending on how you look at it you could you could argue that he was kind of out of position on on the on the goal that that just stuff scored in this one yeah but I will say in terms of his his actual duels and everything not in the air but I mean also he had that one massive crunching like tackle when he went to ground towards it to break up kind of like a counterattack. attack really love, seeing that. love seeing that beautiful beautiful um yeah so I mean and, and obviously you know pretty pretty solid um with his feet in possession too passing and you know building out of the back so um yeah I mean Small sample size from him so far as well, uh, with a lot as is the case with a lot of these new guys, regardless of whether or not they came in in the summer or just like in the past week. It's still early in the season, and there's been a lot of squad turnover. But right. uh, yeah, decent early returns from him. For sure. No, absolutely. No, it definitely is. And look at it. Let's look at the, the visitors real quick. Uh, Kastenmeier and goal. Uh, back four of Zimmerman, Klar, uh, Nadelku, and Kutris. Uh, then had midfield five of really of uh, Nari, Tanaka, Prib, Applecomp. Klaus and Hennings. Uh, Hennings is obviously a name that uh, uh, he's been he's a he's been a, a consistent goal scorer. Not, not necessarily one of the best ones, but he's always consistent. It seems like um, maybe everyone's consistent against us. But uh, Hennings is a name, uh, someone that certainly drew my attention going into this game. Uh, what was your what was your make of the of the lineup when you saw them uh, unveiled? Yeah, our, our old our old nemesis uh, <laughs> Hennings. Schalke yeah. just love making stars of, of strikers that otherwise people yeah. don't really know. Yeah. Um, I mean, didn't he have a hat trick against us? I feel he that did three, that three three game like a couple years ago. I feel he did. Yes. Um, I think he may have scored in, in, in the he, other he did. in that season too. He had like four goals against us. Like, yeah. Like, no, yeah, he tore I mean, us up. He tore us up that year. Uh, yeah, so that would, that's obviously, like, I think there was a lot of, uh, you know, defense mechanism, like, <laughs> jokes being made about that in advance yeah. that Hennings is getting, probably from us in the podcast last week, I don't remember. Um, yeah. Luckily, that didn't come to pass. But, no. uh, yeah, I mean, it's certainly uh, a name that you'd like to see. No, no, for sure. Uh, and you mentioned a couple minutes ago that, you know, that so many of the goals in the Regensburg game came from broken plays, whatever. And we saw it from the first goal, which it was a broken play. Looked like a great, you know, great work by Dusseldorf. No, no, get, no, don't get it wrong, but so many people out of position. Itakuro was one of them as well. Uh, it was really just, you know, bang, bang, play, quick passing that kind of had our guys just running all over, uh, and it led to a, a clean opportunity for Applecomp, and he scored a goal. Uh, one nothing there, and I'm thinking, oh, here we go again, Jack. Uh, not the most ideal way to start there. I, I can't really blame Fireman on that, just because the guy was so wide open. Uh, but uh, not the not the most cleanest defensive effort by our team. Yeah, and I'm I can't remember if I'm already um, kind of blending games together. But was one of our goals against Reg- did Regensburg? Did that come from a from a Malik Chow bad pass as well? When he yes didn't he, yes didn't he put yes. with under pressure or somebody there? Yep. Or, or forget, yeah yeah um. And a, another kind of questionable pass from from Chow out of the back that kind of like led to that turnover. Um, yeah, I mean, difficult play. I think, I think you know, uh, Itakura and, and Chow were kind of like pinched to one side 
and so that ball kind of came back on the deflection and got crossed I mean a little in that kind of you know so there's very quickly like a massive open space right. and I think Itakur actually reacted to it relatively quickly and even started trying to sprint to cover that run before the pass the final ball was was played in um you could argue that maybe like Ovalon could have done more to track back on the other hand side or you know whoever but um yeah I mean I mean a couple nice aerial passes there just kind of worked out perfectly and then a good finish I mean it's it, you have to give Dusseldorf credit but yeah probably an unnecessary giveaway and and caught a little bit out of shape there and this is really against the play because up to that point we were pretty much you know in cruise control in that, in that moment because we were attacking a lot, which is another thing, which is the opposite of what we had in the Regensburg match. We were constantly attacking in this game, which I love to see because we hadn't seen this in a really long time. Uh, but then this came out really against the, against the play, and so we're looking. Oh, here we go again. What's going to happen now? Uh, but it didn't take long for us to bounce back. We reacted the way we want to see after we go down a goal, right? As immediate uh, impact going the other way uh and really bolter is one that started this whole thing where you know he put pressure on the defense of, of dusseldorf caused a turnover went right to Toroda. uh Toroda waited just waited out the defender fed it over to bolter who's streaking in and uh nice finish by him right under the goal, goal clip here so i think it was his legs five hole there uh puts it away and he's celebrating with his angry face uh you love to see that jack uh the way he celebrated there he, he looks like every like <laughs> like jock like villain in like a Disney high school. I mean, like he reminds me of Drago from Rocky IV. <laughs> he, um, what I will say about that goal, I mean, like one small example of something that I that I do feel like we've been better at for the most part of the season when I've when I've watched us is um, in the past when we put pressure on it, it's often not coordinated enough. Yes. And so like the initial person will put pressure, but there's no supplemental like help or whatever. And I feel like it, it, this season more in, in this game, particularly we're, we're, we're applying pressure in numbers so that like, you know, like one person forces something in and there's somebody else back there to like force a secondary thing, you know, just yep. you know what I'm saying. Like, and, and so, you know, we, we, we kind of um, cul-de-sac them in a dangerous part of the pitch guy turns around, tries to make a, you know, a back pass and, and both is able to get a foot into it. And it goes to Torada, as you said. And the one thing I said about Torada so far this season too is, very smart, very aware of where his teammates are. It's not just the goals. It's, he, he plays smart passes at times. He isn't entirely selfish as some yeah. strikers are. He seems to be productive without being particularly selfish. You could argue Boulter's a little bit more selfish than Toroda yeah, is. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, it's a nice ball back to Toroda. I actually was highly concerned that Boulter had taken too many touches and almost like a heavy touch at the end because, you know, it got really close there with the keeper, but he was able to keep a low point on the keeper's legs. Yeah. Um, nice finish, and as you said, exactly the response you want to see. Um, you know, going down one nil in front of the home crowd, and it wasn't you know too many minutes until we were able to fire right back and, and you know massive momentum shift. So, um, and I'll tell you that that's something that we just haven't seen a lot of. Um, is you know it, it's an impressive start. It's 15, 20 minutes of solid play for the team. First goal goes in, and then it just falls apart, and it and the game ends three four nil for us. Yep. And that's kind of what we've seen far too much of. So as fans, it's kind of hard for us to not get into that negative mindset when we see that first goal go in. Yeah. Um, yeah. But credit to the team for, for nipping that in the bud and, and and you know turning things around pretty pretty immediately. Well, the great thing about the feed that we were watching, it was a German commentary. So you love to hear that. You love to hear the, the celebrations on the goals. Uh, you, you mentioned exactly something the commentators mentioned in the game is that the Schalke were hunting with intent, uh, two, three guys on the ball at a time, causing turnovers. And you saw that constantly throughout the game, not just when we, you know, when we were down or, 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 or level. Uh, we were constantly doing it, which is great to see, which is, a, you know, our biggest worry also is, you know, whenever Schalke do get the lead, we saw this in, uh, maybe it was a Regensburg match. No, it wasn't Regensburg. It was a game before where we got a lead and then we just sit back. One goal lead and we try to sit back and try to hold off. It was the one we drew late in the game. Um, and so, you know, we'll get into that, but we didn't see too much of that in this game uh, like we did previously. Uh, we went into the break, 1-1. Uh, pretty good first half overall, I think. Uh, uh, despite that one goal, we were looking um, the, the better of the two teams, I would say. Uh, and then, you know, coming out of the break, you know, we're not sure how things are going to go, but immediately Toroda with a goal. Uh, not his not his, his greatest goal ever, but it counts, right? That's, that's all that matters. Got to see his celebration, right? Uh, two to one at that point, and we're, we're on fire. They we're all loving this. Uh, and from that point on, I think, uh, we really started to keep trying to put pressure on the team, which was I think was important. Uh, but the goal, um, this is the one I think that uh, deflected... Oyan on the left hand side, or maybe it was Bolter. I think it was Bolter. Uh, yeah, Bolter yeah, crossed it in. Uh, Drexler let it go, or, he, or, he, or tapped it just enough to Toroda. And Toroda just got a flick on it and, and hit the defender and went in, or hit the goalie and went in. Uh, uh, thoughts on the on the on the build up play leading to the goal? 
Yeah, so yeah, Bolter, Bolter plays the ball in right from the from the you know the the, the sideline and it gets yeah. deflected. I think he was probably trying to play that more central and deep, and it gets it gets deflected initially and kind of goes closer to the near post where Drexler is. Um, I haven't been able to tell from the replays how much he got on that, but it, it looked like he was trying to flick that back into the path of Torada, and maybe he actually did somewhat successfully. I don't know if it was like the cleanest touch; it may have taken hits off a couple of defenders, but he was certainly trying to do that. Right. And then uh, Torada, you know, fox in the box, right place, right time. Clever little toe poke, as you said, deflects off a defender, but he's able to get it to score in. And, uh, yeah, I mean, good start to the second half as well. Um, I mean, Bolter, you know, once again, I- I involved in it. And, uh, you know, Drexler has been sneaky competent so far, I think, in, in, in his minutes. And, uh, dude, it just Tirada, man. And we'll talk about him more on the, on the third. But just, it, as we've said, it, I cannot tell you how refreshing it is to have somebody like him up top in a shelf kit that you know is consistently going to, like, finish high percentage opportunities and make some other things happen. So nice. It's just so nice. We haven't had that yet. It's since, it's since the since the Huntelar Raul days that we had someone that was like that. We were so comfortable. Like, this guy just touches everything and it's going yeah. to the net. Uh, eight goals between Boulter and Taroda through the first five games. Uh, <laughs> that's that's impressive compared to last year. We could look at last year's. I don't know if we even had five goals uh, through the first eight yeah, games. So, I mean, Tor- Torada joined top of the league again after that because he scored, yeah. you know, the two today. So he's back on the uh, in the Golden Boot conversation. Already. Yep, exactly. Long so way go, yeah, long way to go. But uh, yeah, Bolter goal and assist. Well, almost an assist at that point. You know, Drexler is a player that I've been I've liked a lot since you know he, he's not done too many flashy things, but he does just enough the right things and. He, he, he gets into play involved, and I uh, got to love his beard as well. I, I just like the player, man. It's a, nothing nothing flashy about him, but uh, he gets the job done, man. I, I love I love watching Drexler play, and he seems to be doing uh, good things at the right times, it feels like. Him and Paulson, uh, both of those players. Um, what, are your, what, you know, what are your thoughts on, on Drexler's overall play? Because he hasn't really been doing anything too crazy. Obviously, he got an assist on that. I guess he'll give, they'll give it to him. But um, you, you need a good beard in the squad. you got to have at least one. Or a yes. man bun. Possibly. Or a man, but sometimes you, you, both. You, you, yeah, you need something <laughs> going on to give you a little extra mojo. Yeah, he, he's been he's been a decent so far. Like I said, in possession, I don't feel like there's been enough from that midfield. Like Salazar, I mean, for me in particular, has not really jumped off the screen. And I don't know if I'm not. I mean, also and this like, game was a drop off. I think last two games were a drop off for him. Okay, uh, like I, I'm not, I'm not I'm watching live, so I'm not like re- rewinding the game later and kind of like looking at individual players as much. So I don't, I'm, I'm yeah. there's things I easily could have missed, you know, in the course of it. Um, yeah, I just there hasn't been enough there for me on that. But yeah, Drexler's been fine so far. I think Paulson made a couple good defensive plays in this one too. Um, yeah, man. I mean, like one result, and, and you know we had a pretty bad result before this one, but uh, definitely a much more competent performance in, in a performance where, where it looked organized. There looked to be a plan. Um, so often we're watching these games and just like like what are we even like are we committed <laughs> to doing any one thing at all? Yeah. Um, and this actually goes back to like you know when we're talking about some of like the coordinated you know pressure that we're seeing, which has been lacking. I don't want to get too deep into like you know uh, psychological hypotheticals or whatever, but like the whole crowd can help with that. I mean, it's it's yeah. so much more difficult when you're when you're losing games or whatever, or you know to put that extra yard in to make that extra run to put your body on the line when you're playing in front of an empty empty venue, yeah. and just you know ringing around. Like those are the kind of plays that like it's not just the goals that the fans are getting up for. When people are you know throwing their body in to make a challenge. They're getting rewarded by the fans and yep. saying, like, "Hey, we're noticing, you know, those kind of energy plays, those hustle plays, um, and, and you know, we, we like to see that too." So I, that helps, you know, hopefully their commitment to, to going in that direction in, in some of the games, and we're hopefully going to see more of that. So you know, in the in the second half, you know, we're, we're up two one at this point, and I, you know, I mentioned how we kept we kept you know going at uh, Dusseldorf and making it difficult on them. But there was a point, and I want to say it was around the sixty, maybe seventieth minute, where we started dropping off a little bit, right? Uh, and you see in Toroto starting to get more involved into the game, uh, defensively, I should say. And there's a play, and I don't remember what minute it was anymore. I'll have to go look back at the, re- at the replay. But uh, he chased the ball back almost back to the corner, gets the ball out of bounds because no one else was getting, going after the ball. And he was yelling at the team like like we've seen Hunter do in the past. Come on, boys, get in, get into this because no one was no none of the team was was reacting. They were like kind of like dropping into that you know uh, park the bus mode. And he's like, no, 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 let's get into this, let's fight, let's fight. And then we started seeing the team ramp up a little more. Itakura started getting those those crunching tackles. Paulson as well. Uh, and I, you know, it's we say a lot about Toroda and his what he brings in terms of goals. But I think his leadership at that point he may have put the the armband on because the uh, the captain went off. But um, he brings a lot of leadership. He, you know, he obviously wants to win. Usually, these these goal scorers who have that knack for scoring goals, 
they don't want to just score goals. They want to win. And you could see it in him that he was, you know, pushing his teammates, trying to get more out of them, especially in the, those moments when the team's a little bit lacking and, and dropping into their old phase from last year where, you know, they're like, oh, okay, let's just get past up again. Uh, I don't know if you caught that uh, in, late in the, I guess, middle of the second half there. Yeah, I don't remember that specific play, but I mean, if we are getting that from Torada as well, in addition to his goal scoring, that's a great thing to see him. Obviously, he's, yeah. you know, 30 plus, very much in a position. Yeah. Uh, to offer that kind of that leadership yeah. and play that role in the team. If, it's just a question of whether or not he, he cares enough to, to want that. Um, and, and if he does already, that, that's a great sign. I mean, I, I, I would hope that there's a lot of players that have, that have come to Schalke now that, um, you know, very much in, in the way that players last season wouldn't have wanted to be a part of the squad yeah. that got relegated. I'm sure there's a lot of the guys that are there that are like, you know, wouldn't it be great if we were part of the squad that got Schalke bouncing back up right away? And like, you know, because fans are going to remember that kind of thing. And, and certainly they're going to remember it if you're banging in goals on top of it. But um, yeah, I mean, too many times last season, we were looking around for, for leadership on the pitch um, and, and to be, you know, having people volunteer that. I mean, yeah, I'll go back and try to find that clip, but um, that's, that's great to hear. Yeah, no, no, it was definitely awesome to see. And, you know, we, we, the two one lead, a one goal, a one goal advantage is never easy, especially for us. Uh, it doesn't seem like we do too well with those, and so we're all wondering: is that when is the hat going to drop? When's that shoe going to fall? Right? Uh, the the t- time is ticking away. Uh, we're holding on just barely. Uh, Look like they had some chances here and there. You know, obviously, Fairman has some big saves. He had a big save in the second half, and I, and I don't remember exactly the play. Was it the leg kick save? Yes, yes, yes. point blank. Yeah, uh, big time, big time. So it was Cherlinov before he went off. He got beat bad. I, th- I think it was him. Uh, maybe it was Milik Tiao, and he's like one-on-one with Fairman. Fairman makes a great toe save. If he doesn't, it's a goal. Uh, fantastic reaction by Fairman there. Yeah, I, I don't remember exactly what caused that, but it, it was, you know, ball fell to somebody in the box, and it was a 1v1 and very much looked like it was going to go in. Yeah. Um, and that was frustrating because, yeah, like, as you mentioned, there was that, that, that 15, 20-minute window where we kind of dropped off a little bit. And to me, this always felt like a game where we probably needed three. Yeah, because the defense hasn't been rock solid so far. It's Correct. been it's been okay, it hasn't been great. And yeah. I, I was watching this game, being like, we could really use that insurance call. Um, and uh, yeah, that was. I mean, that that game might end two two if that goal goes in, as opposed. Yeah. To, you know, we saw it in, in the out match, right, where we had a lead, and then late the other team scores a goal, and it's one one. And we had, that's what that was the fear of this game. I think is that. We need that extra goal, or they're gonna get it. They're gonna find a way because it always seems like at the end of the game they're gonna find a way to tie the game. Yeah, uh, I mean, just big, yeah, big time save for Fairman. And that's here's the thing: the number one thing that Fairman's always been good at. You can criticize deficiencies in certain aspects of his game. The number one thing he's always been good at is shot stopping, plain and simple. Yeah, he, he's, he's he's great. I mean, there's other things that that are important to being a good goalkeeper and you know being a quality goalkeeper in 2021. But at the end of the day, it's about you know it's about saving saving goals, keeping on the back of your net, and he's always been solid at that. And it, it made me happy too because. Um, as much as he is, in my opinion, like very much on his way to like Schalke legend status, if he isn't there already, especially everything he's done with the contract we negotiates yeah. recently. Um, even so, you know, the last few seasons for him have not been particularly great or, or smooth sailing. You know, he's been on loan. He's been he's been benched at times. A player who, you know, as good as he is, you know, if he makes a mistake, those seem to compound and he kind of gets the yips for a small period of time. He has yeah. trouble getting out of that. So for me, for him to come up big in, in that moment, hopefully that gives him some confidence and he gets kind of back into his mojo. But it's also just great to see because I think that's a player that all of us root for yeah. as Shaka supporters. It's just, I mean, if, if we want anyone to do well, we want Ralph Fairman to do well. So that was, that, that, yeah, that was a great moment. No, no, absolutely. And so time's ticking away. We're wondering, are we going to be able to hold on here? And then in the 90th minute, I don't remember if it was Oyan or who it was, uh, a big cross into the box, and it goes, you know where exactly where it's going. Going right to Toroda. Toroda does as a, a striker should that we haven't seen in a while. Chest it off his, get, knocks it off his chest. Beautifully placed shot in the bottom corner. I mean, his celebration was great. I mean, the, the crowd went wild. The team went wild. Buskins was in the pile up in the corner, as was uh, Roven Schroeder. I mean, the team and the, and the crowd was going f- Whoa, this buck well, it was an amazing moment there. And if you listen to the replay, uh, the German commentator that we that we were listening to, I mean, they were just going nuts. Uh, how how huge of a goal was that for Toroda to score that goal, the second goal in the game so, for him? I think that was Kaminsky on the delivery. Kaminsky, yes, I think which, you're right. Which is I think his you're second right. assist in as many games uh, because he played that beautiful ball for you know, yeah. the, you know the consolation goal, but played yeah. a beautiful ball in for for that goal that Toroda scored. That's right. Um, uh, last week I think, and uh, yeah, I mean. I just, it's so good. I mean, I mean, first of all, trying to just like just completely little brothers the defender. I don't know who that was, but no matter. Box, <laughs> I mean, boxes him out for the rebound. And then the other thing is, 
such smart body positioning that he, he turns last minute so that he plays it off his chest in the direction of the goal. So and it's not he's like he's playing it, you know, because he's yeah. he's kind of got his back to the goal a little bit and he, he switches yep. so that he doesn't have to take a touch or two to turn around and get set on the defense can kind of catch up to what's happening. It's so an immediate good. chest bounce into the ground first time, you know, toe poke kind of into the corner. Um, you know, hits it with authority, great finish. And it, it's once again. It's such good, competent play from your number <laughs> nine. We've been so stark with this. I, I'm, I'm such a fan of this guy. I mean, like, it was, the, it was, you know, the no-brainer signing of the summer. Like, I mean, once yeah. again, providing he's healthy, kind of guaranteed to score goals, this guy. And he's doing it again so far, and I just hope we can keep it rolling because it's, it's, it just brings me a tremendous amount of joy as a Shaka supporter to have good offensive play occasionally. It does, and I, and I can't remember who said it. Someone, someone tweeted this after the game. Uh, and I don't remember if it was an English or English following or a German following me. They said, you know, I really hope Toronto you know retires as a Shaka player because uh, I mean, if he brings us back to the you know, first division right away, I mean, there you go. <laughs> That's all we need. Uh, what a what a fantastic striker! I'm I'm ready to get my jersey for him. Uh, so yeah, I mean, just it's the, you talked about it, competency and and, and and as being a striker, we've seen we haven't seen that in a long time. Uh, we saw glimpses of it last year with uh, Huntelar, how good he was in, in the flashes that he had at the end of the season. Uh, but, you know, he does the little things so well, not just goal scoring. He sets up his teammates. Um, you know, beginning of the season, I was I was worried that him and Boulter would be conflicting with each other, and they seem to be a, a nice fit because Boulter does like to drift out to the left wing as well, which is great. Um, and uh, Torota does, you know, both, both both strikers, really, they, they come back and try to win balls, and uh, it's just a nice mix so far, and it's, uh, I'm so happy to see it. Now, we're not – it's obviously one game. It's a one-off. We, we saw what happened to Regensburg a week before, but – uh, it's nice to have these games. It's been a while since we got to the, the crowd needed this, and it's you know you mentioned how the the, the players are feeding so much of Velton's arena with the the crowd you know pumping and pumping at the noise. They needed this. They, they saw that goal, and you see how wild it went. It was in in our end too. So I mean, just stuff. Yeah, and game. once again, from what I can tell on TV, nowhere near a capacity crowd. No, I don't, I don't know if that was like a COVID thing or whatever. It didn't so the middle the middle sections were empty, but the ends were full, fairly full. Okay. Not not completely, yeah, but yeah. Saw, I mean, like, I, I don't know if they were intentionally trying to like turn up that volume on the broadcast, whatever. But like, it seemed like it was rocking, and there were times where the atmosphere was like legitimately incredible. Yeah. Or maybe I've just been, I've missed it for so long that I don't remember like you know what heights it can actually get to. And they <laughs> right but I mean, yeah. yeah, to have a goal of that caliber scored late to seal over victory, everyone piles in the corner, you know, with with uh, uh, with Irwin and you know, and and the, the, you know the, the fans and everything. Yeah, it was it was great, and we just haven't had enough of those moments. I think of late as a, as a supporter base, and and beautiful to see. And now the question for me is just um, consistency. Uh, you know, can, can we build this performance, string a few results together, um, instead of this kind of stop start thing? I mean, yeah, I mean, there's still a lot of questions about about Gramatis and how long he's going to be around. And um, once again, great response on the backs of a of a poor result, um, which which is huge and, and something we love to see. Um, but, uh, yeah, get, let's get more of that. I mean, I, I for the most part, in a, yeah, a definite improvement. I, I liked what I see, what I saw in terms of game flow and, and most of what we were doing in that. I mean, like, once again, reasonably competent, which is <laughs> kind of a low bar, but like, <laughs> it's kind of what we were looking for, you know, in the past. Yeah. Oh years. yeah. And, and yeah. So yeah, we'll see how it goes from here, but, um, yeah, big time result. And, uh, yeah, it's just good for, good for the soul, man. Good for the, good for the table. Good for the soul. Good for the table, good for the soul. I don't know, I like that. I do like that a lot. Uh, yeah, no, it was a, it was a good game overall. I think um, not too many to hard. There were some things that obviously you want to see better. Uh, you mentioned Tiao losing the ball uh, late in, a couple times, or at least early on. I noticed that like when he when he's in his defensive end, he tends to one. He has lots of confidence, which you like to see in a defender, but not in your own in your own box. And I say I felt like he took too many chances in the box. He's trying to dribble his way out. And I was like. Mm. All right, you're not like Sergio Ramos or somebody who can really you know, play the ball at like Kulabali or something like that. You know, just pass it out, play, do the safe play. If you're in the middle field, you can do that. You know, but um, he's young; he'll learn from that. And he was one of the first people to celebrate with Toroto in that second goal. It seemed like Fairman. How about Fairman was in the corner as well, <laughs> celebrating? I mean, the whole freaking team, the whole bench was there. It seemed like uh, it was pretty awesome to see. But yeah, yeah, overall good game. Uh, looking at the table, and, go, and go ahead. The, su- the subs, subs that we want to see. Uh, yes, like Becker, Flick, Matthew yes. Hoppe, you know what I mean, like th- those kind of guys. Well, I um, mentioned Flick. Flick, Flick came on as well. a defensive midfielder. Flick came on as a defensive midfielder. I was like, yes, thank you. Uh, and then we saw Becker come in as a center back, which was like, all right, cool, good. And then uh, Hoppy as well. Hoppy, I thought uh, I was I was looking to see what how he and Ho- and Toronto were going to do together. Uh, but yeah, no, the substitutions were great. I thought too. I think. Uh, uh, much improved performance from a managerial perspective from Gramotis in this one. It's uh, we get some big games against uh, Paderborn and um, 
uh, Karlsruhe coming up. But uh, yeah, uh, definitely improved overall, I think, by this team. And I got to say, so far, five games into the season, the star of the team has got to be Roven Schroeder. I mean, the moves he's made. Has he not? Has he done anything wrong yet? It's still early. I mean, not getting money from Kabak, but the, the joke I made on I think our first podcast back this season was, you know, anybody who uh, gets rid of Sebastian Rudy is a friend of mine. That's not, that's that's the main thing. That, but no, yeah, dude. Once again, Schroeder quietly going about his business and, and seeming to be able to negotiate deals that that come across as more favorable than we've been getting recently. Yes, like a little bit more of an edge in negotiations. A little, you know. It, not that we're really in any of these places coming from a place of strength, obviously, which makes it harder to execute, which makes Schroeder's performance all the more impressive. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, we'll see how the season goes. Appears to have built a decent little squad here. Um, certainly a couple players look like they can make a big impact, and we'll see how it goes. But yeah, I mean, moving into the, the next piece of the podcast, right, with, with, the, with the moves that have come out today, but even, even those, you know, prepare to be pretty good. Where do you want to start with that? Um, well, before we get into the actual the nitty gritty of what happened, um, failed transition from Jack Mangan. No, transition. no, it was, no, it was, it was good. No, no, it was good. Um, but I, you know, I think what he's done. If you look at it first, the, the, the whole overall picture that he's done. Uh, look at the team. If the team that we we had on the field last year was in this game, I think the result would have been a lot different. Uh, we have that that failed mentality, uh, and Schroeder's been able to bring in guys who have a winning mentality, guys who don't have that that bat, that past history. And we'll continue to fight. We see that, in, you know, we talk about Bolter be, being a being a bulldog as well as Drexler and some of these guys. Got po- villain. Yeah, villain. <laughs> he's yeah, he's a villain, right? The Bond villain. Uh, and then Paulson and all these, some of these other guys who are just fighting all the time. Um, this team, you know, if we had them last year, it might might have been a different story. But you know, you, you probably never got those guys. I think the the team he's building right now is putting up a lot of fight. And so you see some of the moves that he's made uh, this. Uh, this deadline day and going into deadline day, I mean, we already talked about the moves like Itakura came in last week. Um, some of the names, the big names are still out there for us. Uh, Ozan Kabak, Amin Harit, uh, Bazawan was a name that was floated around. So we did get some um, conclusions on some of these guys. Hoppy was another one that you, you keep hearing names about as well. Nothing on the Hoppy front, uh, but uh, first... Let's go with the, with the with the the younger guy Bazdwan. He gets uh he gets his move to Besiktas, uh, so he officially leaves the club. I believe that was a sell, Jack. Do you do you remember? I don't remember if that was a sell or not. Was it? It might have been. I could be wrong. Um, Memento por favor. While you do that, uh, I mean Harit is another one who's going to be going. He's going on a loan with no option to buy to Olympic Marseille. Uh, so that is a good move because, you know, potentially if we move right back up to the Bundesliga, we can either use him next year or sell him if he has a really great year with Marseille. And then the, la- the last piece of news that broke this uh, before we came on the show was Ozan Kabak. He is going to Norwich. It's a loan with an option to buy for, I think, 15 million euros or something like that, uh, should they want him. If, you know, if it- uh, while Norwich is no Liverpool, I-, 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 I imagine if he does fairly well, they're going to keep him. Uh, unless, you know, Liverpool has higher standards, I think. They're, they're looking for top the next the next diamond in the rough and if you don't play well they're going to move on find someone else um so norwich there's that chance that you know we had that we, re- we had this opportunity with weston mckinney last year where we did a loan with the option to buy and juventus ended up taking him and so uh which oh by the way we might get more money because he, he may get sold here before the end of the market uh, but uh did you get any news on Bazdawan and, and and his move to besiktas Bazdawan is a loan with an option to buy okay Okay. Um, to Bashik does. Uh, Schalke continuing their trend of just loaning out every or selling every Schalke America favorite to Turkey. Um, <laughs> uh, all the players that we were like looking forward to taking a look at this season are just gone at this point. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it, the Boston one thing, once again, it, you know, we liked him in flashes. Definitely sounds like there were some things going on uh, in training and maybe behind the scenes that they, they thought that he needed yeah. to change the scenery, whatever. Uh, yeah, hopefully he gets some playing time and, and, and does well with Pashitas. And, you know, if he ends up getting sold, he gets sold. Um, but maybe it's an opportunity for him to, you know, get more consistent minutes than for whatever reason the coaching staff was willing to give him here. And, and um, you know, maybe, yeah, maybe he does some good. Maybe he comes back and is a different player. Um, Kabak, dude. So Schalke, when they, you know, made the announcement, apparently a non-disclosure agreement, right, in terms of what the details were, reporting online that you're seeing is like something like a $4 million loan fee which not bad for us. And then also I think it was, yeah, like you said, like maybe 14 million option 
uh-huh. um, something like that uh, to, to buy. And then I also saw something, I don't know if this is confirmed yet or not, that we might get like 15% of his of his sale afterwards if, if, oh, if, he, okay. if Norwich do, I, I don't know if I got that right or not, if Norwich do buy him and okay. sell him. I mean, so anyway, but like pretty favorable terms, it seems like. I mean, for once again, this late in the window um, with, with, with not a lot of clout, not a lot of, you know, position to negotiate from strength here, Schroeder finding a way to supposedly, if you believe, you know, the reporting from Valencia Romano or whoever, um, get, you know, a decent loan fee for him. And then also, once again, like, you know, an option to buy that's in excess of 10 million. Um, you know, I recommend making money on the Ozai Kabak sale because we kind of brought him in for that much, but at least potentially uh, being made whole yeah. at the end of it, which is maybe more than you would have expected, given how things have gone in the last couple of months with, with uh, you know, this transfer progress. And I think I think good on Schalke and Roven Schroeder for sticking to the gun, saying this is what we want for him. If we're not taking anything less, I'm sure people were coming in with like five million euros or ten million euros, and like no, no. And I wonder if it was Norwich or if it was Schalke that reached out and said, hey, let's do the loan with the option to buy, uh, because I know that Torino were involved and uh, a couple uh, Turkish clubs and uh, maybe some other Premier League clubs as well. They're they're interested in Kabak, but they weren't trying to pay the fifty million euros. So. Um, you know the fact that we got the loan with the option to buy, and then uh, the high wage that you mentioned—that's uh, that's, that's a decent move. And then um, also, I mean, Harit. I don't know what the wage is on that one, but uh, a loan with no option to buy in this one—that's what do you what do you, what do you make of that one? A no option to buy for Amin Harit. Well, so first of all, it's interesting because like he, you know he posted a pretty emotional goodbye good, goodbye message, which made it sound almost more permanent than like you know. Oh, so did Kabak over a year ago when he joined Liverpool. The same. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, if, if the rate move, if it is a loan with no option to buy, I mean, I guess part of me is like, let's, let's just see how much money we can get for him and see, but like, it sounds like maybe there's not the market that we thought there was going to be. And in this case, you know, he gets to go to a top fight club, potentially, maybe he gets a lot of minutes and, and shows once again, the best of, I mean, Harit in a better situation in, in France. And then there is no option to buy. Maybe we get promoted. Um, you and I were talking before, you know, before we started recording. Maybe we get promoted. Maybe he comes back into the squad then, and either helps us in the Bundesliga again, or at that point has had a season of top flight football away from like you know the relegation year and away from the fight of Bundesliga and whatever disciplinary issues. And his transfer value is back to where we maybe think it would be, and would be able to pull the trigger on it then, um, and, and you know have it work out for us better. So, dude, I don't know, man, but Schroeder continues to impress. Like really. Yeah. doing a nice job i think a lot of shock supporters are, are pleased with his efforts and certainly you and i are yes I, I think we certainly are and uh so i mean i don't know if any other moves are going to happen here i mean not that we had much money to deal with anyway and i don't know if i mean hoppy is the one person left that you know yeah. shaka said that we want eight million euros for him if you're going to buy him they may take as much as as little as five million euros but um I saw I don't something know. late today that was like a mallorca rumor for like three million i don't know i also heard burnley as well uh, so there are a couple pe- couple teams out there that are, that are 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 interested in him. We'll see, I mean, and I'm sure it's for the American market. And you know he's and he's a decent player as well. So we'll Matthew see if, Hoppe, if you're listening, dude. Choose Mallorca over Burnley. I mean, just think, think <laughs> I was gonna say stay at Shaka. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I I, I I I obviously for the Shaka America reason I want to keep stay, see him stay at Shaka. But I think you know playing behind Toroda and even even uh, Bolter to an extent. He would learn so much from them. Yeah, you want to get the pitch time. I get it. But, I mean, if, if you can't be an understudy to Lewandowski, why not Toroda? A guy's going to still go score a lot of goals in front of your face. So you can see what he does. Maybe you feed off, feed off of his uh, – so maybe learn something on the way. So, I mean, I don't know. I just uh, – yeah, well, yeah, it know, is what it is. It's a business, well, right? Well, it's a good point. And then what we saw in this game against Dusseldorf was kind of what you and I had been speculating for a while. Is like maybe Matthew Hoppe initially, before you start needing the squad rotation or before there's any injuries, hopefully there aren't any injuries, yeah. But Matthew Hoppe playing for the Super Sub role, right? So, like, yep. you pick one of Bolter or Toronto based on the game. Take out a little bit early. Give Matthew Hoppe 20, 30 minutes at the end of the game to come yep. on. You know he's going to give you the work right off the ball as well, in yep. addition to the to the offensive threat, which can help you kind of close things down, particularly in a game like this where we had the lead. Um, so, yeah, I mean, obviously you and I would like to see him stay probably ideally, particularly if we're not going to end up getting maybe the financial – uh, return that we were hoping, which may have been a little bit overly optimistic. We were seeing like eight yeah. million, something like that. If it ends up being like sub five, I mean, I guess it depends on you know the financial situation of the club. Um, but yeah, part of me, like as I always said, I, I'm, I'm a, I kind of don't want to get rid of him in case we have issues, you know, with health up top or something like that. But uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Either way, nice to see him uh, back and recovered from whatever illness he was dealing with and, and getting some pitch yes. time. So. No, no, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, after that game, 
looking at the table. Uh, Regensburg still doing their thing. They actually didn't get a win in this past game, I think. Oh, well, actually, yeah, no, they drew. They drew. Um, oh, wait, no, they lost. Okay, well, I'm calling me wrong. Only three possible options. We'll get to the right one eventually. <laughs> eventually, right? I got 50 50 chance. 50 50 50 chance. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Regensburg still at the top of the table. Uh, they hold a one point lead over Paderborn. Paderborn is our actually our next matchup. We actually have an international break, which uh, kind of threw me for surprise this week. And I was like, oh, wait, we don't have another game until the 12th, which is nice because. I'm going on a little bit of a break myself, so uh, I come back just in time for the game, so I'm happy about that. Um, but, yeah, uh, Paderborn's in second place. St. Pauli, good to see them up in third place. And then Dynamo Dresden, Nuremberg, our friends, obviously. And then Karlsruhe, which is the opponent after Paderborn. So, uh, two interesting games coming up here on the horizon after the international break, Jack. Um, it's still early to know what kind of teams both of them are, but obviously they're doing well. Uh, we need to take them seriously as we should have taken Regensburg. Um It'll be interesting to see which Gramosis and which Schalke shows up. Is it the team that came up against Regensburg or the team that we just saw this last game against Dusseldorf? Um, I think once we see those two games, we might have a better idea of what kind of team we are. You usually don't tell. You usually can't tell what kind of team you have until about ten games in. Um, but what are your initial thoughts? You know, obviously we have an international break now. Uh, what are your thoughts early on these two games coming up on the horizon? We can tell that Richard doesn't really follow the U.S. men's national team at all because uh, some of us are, are quite hyped about these World Cup qualifiers and you know some of these international windows going on. Very much circled on the calendar. Uh, but uh, <laughs> if you look at that table right now, and we kind of alluded to this a little earlier in the podcast, um, take a look at that goal difference over on the right hand side. You know, like you look at the top ten. One of these things is not like the other. I mean, Schalke is the only team in there that doesn't have a positive goal difference. Uh, the nine goals scored, which is which is a solid return so far. Nine conceded, which is what yep. we're talking about. Like that defense needs some work. And four of those were against Regensburg, granted, yep. um, who are top of the table. So I mean, you have to you have to kind of take that with a grain of salt to some extent. But um, yeah, I, I feel like for the most part, we have a squad that can score goals somewhat regularly. Like I feel okay about that at the moment. And you know, with Itakura, you know, with some of these reinforcements, maybe in you know, with time, maybe we'll see that that defense shore up. But I, that, that's one of the main things I'm looking for over the next couple of games post international break is how do we look um, at the back and, and, you know, are we able to keep ourselves in games where, you know, one or two goals from us does get the result that we're looking for, as opposed to yeah. like so often last season, like if we were looking for a result, we needed, you know, Matthew Hoppy to score a hat trick or something. <laughs> in order, oh, yeah. Like, and so, yeah. Double our goal output in one game. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. That, that's kind of my, my biggest focus i think for the next couple weeks here well it's funny you bring up matthew hoppy uh, he led the team obviously in goals last year with his six goals uh let's look at some of the statistics here of the season and oh by the way uh simon Toroda, six goals on the season already through five games uh he's back to his natural goal scoring self uh in this fight to liga um sing for um uh regensburg with three assists probably got all that against us and his goal right uh then gimber is uh duels one and uh, Mamba there with the top speed, but uh, yeah, Taroda on top of the goal scoring charts right now. Uh, really great to see. Uh, Guido Bergsteller has four in the league. I don't know if you saw that, man, but Guido Bergsteller has got four in the league. Uh, he, I don't think he scored four goals the last three years with us. <laughs> I, I, I would, I would like to see. When did we play St. Pauli, by the way? That is a good question. I would please, love to see St. Pauli. Me, please tell me it's like in or around December, so that. We can present Guido Bergstaller with the latest edition of the Schalke Ugly Christmas sweater. Um, because, you know, no man December 5th. I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying, please make it happen. I mean, I know our budget's probably not what it was in terms of being able to whip off some yeah. of these like, one off kits and type, you know, merch type deals. But uh, yeah, I mean, perfect opportunity to, uh, you know, get Guido Bergstaller back in the, uh, the Christmas marketing for us. Mm, mm. That'd, be, that'd be something there, huh? Uh, that would be something. Here's a question. When we play St. Pauli, how many times is he going to be offside against us? Or is he going to perfectly time all of his runs and just wreak havoc? He's going to score against us. <laughs> hey, Henning's new. It's a new year. It's a new Schalke, man. This is true. This it's is true. This is true. So, uh, yeah, let's see. Let's, let's see us uh, short up that defensive end. I think... Uh, that is the thing we know we need to fix right now. I, I'm still trying to, obviously, I'm trying to wrap my head around how are we getting all these opportunities to the strikers where last year, I don't know if Toronto was on the team last year, we would have got as many goals because the service wasn't there. Obviously, it's a different team this year. The whole, Almost the entire team is brand new. Uh, and so that's probably a good big reason there. But uh, I mean, it's starting yeah. out because Fairman and Malik Chow, and that's it. 
in the yeah. in Dusseldorf. I think everyone else is a new player for us that was in the starting lineup. So yeah, yeah definitely, definitely an overhaul. Roven Schroeder, man. Roven Schroeder. All I can say. Um, anything else we need to chat about tonight, Jack? Uh, we, we covered a lot. Uh, we obviously got a win. We got an international break, so we're going to take a little break ourselves here until the next one. Um, yeah, anything else you want to cover tonight from the from the game? Oh, dude, I think I think that's it. Just just nice to have a Victory Monday podcast back again, and, and uh, hopefully uh, many more to come. Again, if you go, if you guys are in uh, this side of the pond, Canada, U.S., even Mexico, uh, and you're looking to watch Schalke, um, I guess the the best way to do it is Schalke TV. And if you if you're unsuccessful, you know, getting a hold of them. Get a VPN, get one football app. I think that's the way to go. Uh, we, you know, this is what Jack and I are using, and it's, it works very well. Um, but it also an alternative, a cheaper alternative as well. Uh, if you just want to listen to the game, Schalke's website does offer the game free to listen. It's German commentary, but nonetheless, you get to participate in the game and listen to it. Um, so there was moments where my, my, my stream froze, and I had to go to the, to the Schalke website and listen to the game. But... Um, Definitely, there's some options out there for you. Obviously, you can if you want to listen to the radio, tune in app is another way you can listen as well. And we'll, we'll try to find any, any other method. I know a couple of guys were telling me about some um, uh, different ways that they were watching the games as well. So uh, I would say the one football app should sponsor us, but they probably wouldn't be thrilled that we're just advocating using VPNs on our podcast to, to access. Hey, dude, we don't need to tell them about that. Yeah, well, I just did. My bad. Uh, <laughs> dude, fr- fr- friend of the friend of the podcast, Ronan Murphy's been on the pod. He That's has. Been, yeah, friend of the podcast. Uh, retweeting something that uh, Bundesliga 2 setting streaming records apparently for that league. Uh, Shock you fans! Would hope, you would hope that you know the worldwide leader. Uh, Shock America. Yes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the worldwide leader in American tin Shock account. Not a lot of content, uh, competition in that market. But you would hope that ESPN might uh, take note of that. And, uh, you know, maybe decide to change some things with their policy, too. But, you know, once again, the interest in the spider Bundesliga, uh, pretty significant this season. And, and you know, not, not surprising to, to, to see that with all the, you know, the, 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 the great competition there is this year and the big name clubs and everything. Yeah, no, no, for sure. Um, I, I would love if ESPN finally picked up the picked up the, um, the rights to this fight, the Liga, if you in terms of it. more games, in terms of more games. What's his name's got to really push the push the lever on that there? <laughs> uh, hold on, I'm trying to pull up his photo. So a friend of the show, Paul Forster, uh, he was uh, he was over in uh, Charlotte. So former uh, Shaka player who uh, did help make us make a video for us, Christian Fuchs, is now a Charlotte FC. And uh, so Paul Forster was so kind to uh, have met him, and they, they chatted up. And so let's see if you can see it on the screen here. There he goes, taking a picture of Christian Fuchs. Look at that. And he's sharing it with us. Uh, you know, he had, he had a nice conversation with Christian, he said. And uh, so, yeah, it's uh, great to see Christian Fuchs again. Uh, it seems like a perennial. He should just come on the show and, and join with us. What do you think, Jack? Uh, I just make sense. He's stateside now. I mean. No, I, I think I absolutely think we should get Christian on the podcast. Also, shout out Zach Luki Hans, uh, Schalke America listener, Charlotte resident. There you um, go. Uh, who was very stoked about the Christian Fuchs transfer once I told him what the connection was. Uh, to, to Xiaoga. Anyway, uh, yeah, no, definitely. Uh, we should we should try to make that happen. We already have had him on the podcast via cameo or whatever that was. Uh, he made a cameo, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pay him again to be on the podcast, but whatever. Uh, dude, we, we, you got to root for the people wherever they are. I mean, I mean, I, I know right. that you were you were religiously watching Philadelphia and Union games when Barnetta was there. Uh, I know you told me that. I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm watching Franco DeSanto right now in South America. I, the second. <laughs> The second I brought up Barnetta, I was like, that's a mistake because it's going to remind him that Got him. supposedly scored a goal today. Supposedly. Believe it. Or like, we haven't seen video game. evidence. Yeah. Honestly, we yeah. haven't seen video evidence of Berkstaller scoring either. So, the same. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's wrap it up. That's enough. That's enough for now. Let's wrap that's it up. enough. I was gonna say, Paul Forster did have a question about the transfer window, but we kind of already went over the, the transfer window and all the moves that happened. So one day left, things could still happen, but uh, I don't foresee anything happening, Jack. Uh, we did put a poll on our Twitter asking, uh, would, would would fans be interested in uh, us doing a live stream during the game? And it seemed like about 90% of you guys said yes, they'd be interested in us doing it. So maybe we'll, maybe we'll dabble into that. We got about uh, a couple of weeks here with the international break that maybe we can uh, figure something out here. But uh, yeah, it's uh, thank you for the interaction there on uh, on Twitter there. We appreciate you uh, commenting on that, Jack. So uh, let's wrap this bad boy up here. Uh, subscribe to the Shaka US newsletter. 
not only do you get info on the club, but you get the latest on, on all the local fan clubs throughout the U.S. Maybe some watch parties coming going on here now, uh, depending on what how COVID is in your area. And uh, you'll even hear about our podcast as well. Keep tuning in each week, minus international break, uh, as we bring you the latest from the Royal Blues. Uh, we like to thank Schalke for providing the tidbits on our podcast tonight, and thank you, Sadie Montoro, for scoring goals still. Uh, Jack, anything, uh, anyone you'd like to give a shout out to? Shout out to NBC4 Nashville. Um, Heyo. Uh, I will be in the vicinity. Yeah, maybe I'll try to get to take a picture there. We'll see. We'll see. During the international break, I'll see what I can do. Some sort of, uh, you know, share for share deal with them, right? Pure internet stuff, right? A little, little scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Um, right. But uh, yeah, no. Beyond that, you can you can find me on Twitter uh, at jm megan j m m a n g a n. If you like an uncluttered timeline, I'm a great follow because I don't tweet that much. <laughs> so you can count on me to not pollute your feed. Uh, but yeah, that, that, that's that's all for me this evening, folks. Thanks for uh, thanks for listening. My head, my my head is obviously somewhere else because you said scratch my back, you I scratch your back, and I thought of the immediately thought of the line from Superbad, but I'm not going to repeat it here. <laughs> Funny thing about my back, never mind. Um, probably a good idea. Yeah, uh, as always, you can follow me at r underscore k h a r m a n uh, anywhere on social media, and then make sure you follow the podcast. Uh, if you're if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, definitely subscribe, like, leave comments, and then you can follow our podcast anywhere that streams music: Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, you name it, we're there. So. Definitely give us a follow. And until the next episode comes, my friends, stay ready because we'll be with you soon. Luke Alf.